What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a BB shield for either your optic right here or your light up front. And this is going to prevent you from getting any broken optics. You don't want these things breaking because they're pretty expensive. But you can see I've mounted up the Olight PL Pro and I'm planning on using it in a game here in a couple days so I want to make sure it doesn't break because this thing's $150 and I'd rather not get it shot out. And you can see on the red dot I've already got one installed and this has saved this red dot countless times. And you can see on my uh, stream light here, I also have one installed, and this has saved this guy a couple times too. So you definitely want one of these if you're going to be running your stuff in games that you care about. Obviously, if you don't care about it, it's not a big deal, but I don't want these breaking. First thing I want to do is take this off. Obviously, you don't want to be working with it on the gun. And speaking of the gun, it is empty and there's no battery in it. Definitely don't want to be doing this while anything's loaded. Go ahead and take this off, and then put this off to the side. Here's a material that I'm going to be using. It's just an eighth inch sheet of clear Lexan. And you can see it's not brand new. This is a little dirty, but what's important is that it has this protective layer on it. And you can see I've cut a couple pieces out of this already. It doesn't use a lot. So this little broken piece is going to last you forever. All right. So the next thing that I do is I like to get a coin or a washer or something that is the exact size that I want the cutout circle to be. The way I measure is I take it and I place it on the front of the lens. And you can see right here that it's basically flush with the edge. You want it to be perfectly flush along this edge. But now that that's picked out, we can go ahead and use this washer and mark out where we want to cut. Another thing I like to do is use some masking tape and sort of mask the area where I'm going to be cutting. This makes it easier to see the line after you mark it, and it also makes it to where the edge of the plastic is not going to get chipped by the blade. So now we got a black sharpie and we got our washer here and let's go ahead and lay out the circle that I'm going to cut out. So what I'm going to do is try and place it as close to the edges as possible to maximize the amount of material that I get to save. Alright, and that looks to be about perfect. I left just enough room on each side for the blade and we should be good to go. Alright, and this is what I'm using to cut this out. This is a scroll saw, and this is going to make it super easy to cut that circle out. If you don't have one of these, you can easily use a coping saw, a hacksaw, a bandsaw, whatever you have to use, but I'm going to use this because it makes my life easy. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this up in here on the saw blade and trace the outside of that circle. Obviously you don't want to cut inside the circle because then you'll be cutting the actual edge of what you want to use. We're going to basically cut this big and then sand it to the exact size that you want. It's not going to be perfect after it gets off the saw. So let's go ahead and start this up, select our speed. You don't want to cut this too fast. You want to take your time and make sure you do a good job. Alright, and there it is. Our circle is cut out. See? That is what you're left with there, and you can see the edges are definitely rough. We're gonna fix that with a little sandpaper and some patience. It's gonna end up to be a perfectly round circle. Alright, and here I have some 220 grit sandpaper as well as a belt sander. Now if you have one of these, you can use this to get the size closer to the final dimension. I would definitely not recommend doing the finishing with this. You want to use some hand sanding to get the size absolutely perfect. It is very easy to take too much material off with this, and then you gotta restart. But I am going to use this to get these high spots off and get this closer to the final size that I want. And again, using these power tools, you definitely want to be wearing eye protection. These can throw little shards of plastic and you don't want to catch one in your eye. And while I sand this, I am going to be checking it against the light to make sure I don't take off too much material. You can see just how much we need to take off there. And that's all I'm going to do with that. I got it a bit closer, you can see, but there are still some high spots and inconsistencies that I'm going to have to work out. So we're going to do all of that by hand sanding. This is the most tedious part, but it is the most important. You have to make sure you do this correctly and you put the time into it to get the best result. The way I'm going to sand this is basically running it horizontally to the edge. I don't want to do this because it's easy to nick the edges and I want sharp, crisp edges for when I attach it. And as I'm sanding it, I have the light right here just so I can make sure that I do not go too far.
All right, and we are done sanding now. This is pretty much perfect. You can see it lines up on both sides evenly. So let's go ahead and do the best part, and that is peeling off the protective coating. And here you can see if you've made any mistakes and scratched it up at all. All right, one side. And there it is. Obviously you wanna clean this before you install it. You don't want any of that dust getting underneath it. So I got a microfiber cloth here and I'm just gonna clean both sides, only holding it by the edges so I don't get fingerprints on it. All right, and that looks really good. There, and that looks really good. All right, and time for the fun part. So we're gonna go ahead and tape this up. Now you can glue it, you can use silicone, you can do whatever you want to attach this, but I found that just a strip of black electrical tape looks really good and it works well and it's not going to cause any damage or any glue residue on the light when you go to take it off. So black electrical tape. I'm gonna make sure that the tape only comes to about half of this plastic here. I don't want it to come over this edge because then it'll just trap dirt and look terrible after a little bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold this on this edge here, line it up exactly how I want it. Really difficult to do this around a camera, by the way. And then we're gonna line up that tape edge there. And just bring it around and tape off the whole perimeter here. All right, and there it is. See how good a job we did. Yeah, that looks really good. And you can see that there is no sticky edge here. I can run my hand over that and nothing's gonna peel. Yeah, that looks really good. I'm very happy with that. It still works, obviously. <laughs> and if you're worried about it melting the clear plastic, it's not going to. My stream light's a thousand lumens and I've used this on other lights at around 1500 to 2000 lumens and I've never had any problems with it melting. Mainly because it is clear. All the light passes through and it doesn't put any heat energy into the actual plastic. All right, so let's go ahead and mount this back up on there. And that is it. Pressure pad installed, good to go. And now there are zero issues with our lens. If it takes a BB, you can smack it right in that lens and I'm not worried about breaking a $150 light. So that's it for this tech video. If you liked the video, be sure to hit like, subscribe if you want to see more like this, and thanks for watching. See you later.